What's up guys, today I'm gonna to show you how to plump an equipment slab for your swimming pool. We have a fiberglass swimming pool behind me over here in the backyard and I'm gonna show you how to plumb this up, how we run the system, how we design the plumbing to go into the system, what does what, why do you need what you need, and all those little details. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right, all right, here we are. I'm gonna be doing a little voiceover. So hey, Zeus does all of our equipment now we used to do uh, all of our equipment and uh, we just have gotten to where we have done quite a few swimming pools over uh, over time and that's kind of our goal in general right is to um, do a lot but you know uh, some people hire more employees for us we just uh, contract him out and uh, everything works out really really well so this is all Pentair equipment, and what we're doing here is he's going ahead and putting all of the fittings on. We got the um, release valve up there, which will have the thermos or temperature or gauge on top, and then putting all the uh, seals, the fittings that go on the the pump and the filter and the heater. Uh, you know, just a little explanation on the heater. I, it's not that difficult. Once you get the rest of this, you'll get all of it. I don't actually uh, get the heater in the shot, but this is a 10,000 gallon pool, so it's pretty small. Uh, it's a 30 foot freedom in total length, so uh, we're looking good here. We're just gonna make sure that is twisted on there. You can do it by, uh, obviously you're gonna do that thing with a wrench, but making sure that the thread tape's on there, nice and snug. And I don't want to over tighten those because those are plastic. So uh, those are the fittings that come with it. And then Jesus is going to go ahead and put couplings on them. And then that way he can uh, tee up. This slab is oh, five by seven. So we have six foot to the pipes. And then, uh, yeah, it gives us plenty of room because we want to 90 over into this, the uh, equipment and have plenty of room. So this is really just going to be standard. If you guys do plumbing, I mean, or don't do plumbing, it's just clean, making sure all your pipes are clean, making sure all the little um, the dust marks of the pipe, I don't know what they're called, but you just clean everything up, you know, making sure everything's clean with that primer. And then we're using like a medium set uh, glue for everything and then uh, making sure it's got nice and nice glue on it everything's clear to maintain a clean working environment here the purple is brutal um so we just make sure it's all clear and all that and everything stays clean and if there's like excess he'll go ahead and clean it up so he stays really clean on these equipment pads so that's a plus um these ball valves are by uh union valves by colonial i think these things are the best um, just make sure that everything's tight perfectly because when everything gets done, you know, you can't just start. You can sometimes move and tweak the equipment, but um, you want to make sure everything's done right. So making sure everything is level, on point. And what we're doing here is you can see the 90s. We use sweep 90s for everything. And uh, everything, you know, looks really, uh, really good. I'm just kind of rambling around here. Um yeah, I mean, it's just basic, guys. It's easy stuff. Easy peasy. I think he actually did this pad in like 40 minutes. <laughs> Honestly. He's super quick. Um, that's, which is great for us, because he goes in there, knocks it out, and charges us per hour, and, uh, you know, in and out. So, you know, making sure everything is tight together, you know, really snug, and very important. The whole the whole nine yards is important. He, what he's doing here, so this, so that's the inlet, right? We're gonna be pulling in the water, be pulling the water from the drains, and the skimmer. All right. So, in this case, um, you know we've got everything. Oh, you know what? I think he may have. No, no, sorry. I was thinking to myself, but um, 
so the drain and the skimmer, sorry, the drain and the skimmer is one. I don't know what I'm thinking here. And that gets tied into each other, so then that's just one line. It's going to be pulled into the pump, and then you're going to go up like 18 inches. So you want it higher than the filter. Uh, for reasons, to be honest, I'm not 100%, but I've learned this from my maintenance guy who's really good with plumbing. And I'll be honest, I couldn't really tell you. I know my brother knows, but that's what we're dealing with. And then when when you go up there, then we're going to tie in our uh, bonding defender, which is what he's got in his hand. And that's just all standard. It's all two inch, so you don't need any reducers. That's the great thing about doing two inch. We used to do one inch back in the day. But now everything's two inch, and it just goes in, you know, super nice. There's no reducers of any kind. The only reducers we need now are for our um you know our, our actual fittings for the returns and the lights those are inch and a half but for the most part everything is two inch so what we had to do before is we'd get reducers and reduce everything down to inch and a half and it, it's such a waste of time and it's like the restricts the flow so much more so the two inches of the way to go and some even say it's you know not enough somewhere but for us 40 building 40 foot swimming pools and fiberglass, you know, it, it's plenty, plenty. And, uh, and, and you know, on the, on the equipment side, you know, for us, it's just super simple. You know, we just go all Pentair. You know, they make pretty good equipment. And it's like, it's not, nobody cares enough to say, hey, I want this, this does this much on the pump, and this does this much on the filter and whatever. It all works relatively the same. And, and maybe the only thing you may do is upgrade your uh, super flow to an IntelliFlow. That would be like the biggest thing because those IntelliFlows are actually super sweet. Um, those are the details that would matter. Other than that, I mean, for me, I'm just like, it's pretty good, man. I mean, I, but some people, if they do, will uh, they want to pay the money or whatever. It's like it's no problem. So there's no really rhyme or reason. It's just the fact that, or actually the reason is to stay consistent. And everything's the exact same. It looks good. And we don't have to run around chasing, you know, Hayward this, Pentair that. The only thing we would do Hayward is uh, is the, like, what is it? The salt cell. So this is getting a salt cell. All right, so the bottom of the pump or the filter there, you can see it's going in the heater. And it's just a direct shot. Um, and actually, there is a 45. You can't see it hardly. Um, but I'll show you here in the end. But it is a 45. 45 or 22 and a half. Maybe it's a 45. And then uh, then the outlet goes. And so the way the system is, right, is it pulls in. You go defender. This is all on purpose. The defender's up top, goes in the filter, and then it goes in the heater. And as it comes out of the heater, you normally have a check valve, but you don't, it already has one built in. We do one for an extra, but you don't have to. This one, we just didn't do one. Um because I guess a smaller pool and just a layout. So uh, we didn't do one, but that's what we would normally do on our bigger pools. So then we do the salt cell and then it goes to the returns. And on this one specifically, we did two lines for the returns just because it's a freedom. And anybody who sees freedom by Imagine Pools, their shells, they're uh, where we put them anyway, the return lines, they're very hard to pull put together because we want the flow to be evenly it's a lot easier like on an imagine or a, uh just any I, literally any other shell well yeah any other shell to link them all together run an excess of like a foot and a half two foot and then that creates equal flow across everything so with this one we couldn't do that so we just ran two lines for the returns and that's the reasoning for that so our piping is very minimal you know we we do not have a lot going on there and man, is it, it's just a clean system. It works well. Everything is solid. And another thing with the pad size is it gives us, again, more room to deal with everything and have uh, plenty of room for redoing in the future. And honestly, it's just a long-term play. So it's really for us, first of all, to have room plumbing it, and second, to give the customer the option to replace things in the future and redo it if they want to whatever um and 
that's kind of what we do because there's plenty of room to cut pipe and or replace a salt cell, replace a fitting, replace anything. Anything needs to be replaced. And so we give ourselves plenty of room. So he's going to tee off right here in front of the uh, salt cell. And then uh, I didn't get the last shot, but he'll basically go over and then, uh, you know, 90 up just like everything else and tie that in and make it on the same line. But we will be putting a check valve on each line. That's very important too. Everyone gets its own check valve. So you can, uh, you know, have control over every line. If we do a drain and a, uh, okay, what we do normally on a pool, if we do like bigger than 35 foot, we'll run two lines. So one for the drain, one for the skimmer. And then we'll come up, put each one in its own, have its own check valve. And then we'll tie that into one supply, just like we would be doing these returns here. And that way, obviously it's, it has to, because it has to pull, it's sucking all the water through. And then you can, uh, sh you know, shut each one off. And these uh, colonial uh, ball valves, man, you can unscrew them. That's why I said tighten them, because you can unscrew them and just pull the whole thing out. So virtually replacing these things if the seal goes bad is seamless. That's the beauty about these things, dude. How many pools have you guys seen where the valves are PVC'd in and you can't, you have to like cut the pipe and put couplings on and everything else just to redo it? These ones, as long as the glued fitting is perfect, you're ready to go. So pretty simple pad, guys. Not a whole lot to it. Uh, the rest is just going to come out to figuring it out. Here you go, man. Final shot. Look at it. It's a close up of the valves work here everything is leveled it actually did wasn't as straight as I wanted to and I told Jesus I'm like man what's going on we try to make everything nice clean square level you see how it comes up and over into the heater um, you know there's a couple ways you can do it that's one way so everything is uh, pretty self-explanatory thanks guys let me know if you have any questions below subscribe to the channel and like and comment below